The first golden rule for managing your Jira backlog is to make your backlog deep. D-E-E-P. Four letter acronym coined by Mike Cohn. And no, I'm not talking about how deep your voice can go. <laughs> that is not what she said. <laughs> Here's what I'm talking about. The letter D means keep your backlog detailed appropriately. Items that are at the top of your backlog should have small size and a lot of detail because we're going to work on them soon. And we size them small because we're broken down our epics into smaller stories that we'll work on for an upcoming sprint. The items that you don't plan to work on anytime soon, like in another month or another few months from now, those should be at the very bottom of your backlog. You see, these items should have fewer details and a much larger size. As a real example, let me show you my Jira project for developing an e-commerce shopping app. At the top, we have stories that are more fleshed out, but as we go down our backlog list of items, the ones that are at the very bottom, they have little detail to them because we're going to work on them later on in our project. The second letter in our DEEP acronym is that your backlog should be emergent. In other words, your backlog is never complete and it will always have items that are being added to it based on what the customer wants. It's kind of like having a Christmas wish list every day, which I'm sure you and I have had our entire lives. So your product backlog is continuously emerging over time. As new items are being added or existing items are being tweaked or refined, the product owner will need to reprioritize the backlog. The third letter in our DEEP acronym is that the backlog must be estimated. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, each backlog item should be estimated based on the effort required to create that item. Items at the top of your backlog should have smaller and more accurate size estimates. Depending on what your company and what your team uses, you can use story points or the number of ideal days. And the very last letter in our DEEP acronym is that your product backlog must be prioritized. Prioritize the near-term items that you'll work on for the next few sprints. So for example, user stories for creating a release one should be prioritized first over those that are tied to software release two and even release three in the future. So to recap, manage your Jira backlog by making it deep, <laughs> detailed appropriately, emergent, estimated, and prioritized. If you have trouble remembering this acronym, it's time for story time. Growing up as a kid, my mom would always listen to her favorite music group of all time, and that's the Bee Gees. You guessed it. So after I came home from school and whenever I would do my homework, so that would be algebra or history or English, my mom would play music from the Bee Gees. And her most favorite song is, How Deep Is Your Love? And so it stuck with me ever since. So hopefully my story helps you remember to think of the DEEP acronym. The second golden rule for managing your Jira backlog is to ruthlessly groom your backlog. Cut through the fluff so it's as lean and as cut as Sylvester Stallone is for Rocky. Just cut it out and ruthlessly prioritize it. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. What I am saying is you got to do it, my friend. When you're grooming your backlog, there are five things that I recommend you do. Clarify ambiguities. Break down large items into smaller stories re-estimate any user stories, prioritize items for the next sprint, and fifth, remove any items which are completely irrelevant based on your team's work and feedback that you're receiving from the customer. So if you focus on these five areas, you're gonna be golden, as golden as a golden retriever. <laughs> it's corny, I know, and because you watched this far, here's a picture to prove it to you. <laughs> All jokes aside, from my experience, I found that having clearly defined acceptance criteria can actually do wonders for your team and clear up any ambiguities. As a real example, let's jump into my Jira project. For this user story, we have, as a customer, I want to preview my orders so that I can know I'm ordering the correct products. So to make sure our team is aligned with what needs to be created, we have a one sentence definition of our acceptance criteria. The software should show a pop-up screen, listing the products, description, quantities, and pricing for each that is being ordered. To groom the backlog easily, I recommend one easy tip. Prioritize your backlog with these three things in mind. The needs of the customer, the goals of the business, or the goals for your upcoming sprint. 
So in our Jira project, we have these two bugs that are prioritized first because they're tied to the release of version one. If you look further down the backlog, we have these other user stories that are prioritized after these bugs because they're tied to version two. The epics for product search and user accounts, they aren't as high value to the customer as the ones for shopping cart and optimizing the shopping interface. By the way, if you'd like to learn exactly how to use Jira, then create your free account using my link below and go from beginner to pro with my free guide, which you can download at alvinthepm.com forward slash free guide. The third golden rule is to have an easy to use definition of ready. Now I know this is controversial and you might disagree with me, but hear me out here. When you have a definition of ready with your team, you'll have higher quality user stories in your backlog, which aligns expectations before you start any work. There's no need to complicate things. Just brainstorm with your team, toss around a few ideas. So when a user story is ready to be worked on, there shouldn't be any confusion as to what work needs to be done. Here's one example. Number one, the user story is written in a proper format and it specifies how the user benefits from it. Number two, the acceptance criteria has been approved by the product owner. Number three, all documentation has been attached to the user story. Number four, all assumptions and dependencies have been validated. And lastly, number five, each criteria is pass or fail. So as you can see, it's really not that hard to create a definition of ready as long as you involve your team to define what's important before you start any work. From this video, which tip have I shared with you that resonates with you the most? Let me know about it in the comment section below and I encourage you to join the conversation. In the spirit of learning everything you need to use, Jira, from start to finish, please watch this video next and I'll see you in the next video.